Hello, fantasy football fans, and welcome to another Getting Defensive. Uh, my name is Gary, a.k.a. the IDP Tipster, and this is Mr. Justin Varnes. How are you doing today, Justin? Doing well, Gary. Good to see you, my man. Yep. So always, always good. So we got kind of a hot topic going on at the moment amongst the ranks of the whole situation with the Cardinals and the linebacker crew. Um, that's we. So we know they, the rumor is that they've gave Jordan Hicks the permission to seek a trade. Real quick, why don't you uh, let me get your thoughts on that uh, in general, if you don't mind, Justin. Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, well, let's start with uh, Jordan Hicks, the the football player. Let's just start with, um, you know, why, why the Arizona Cardinals might be tinkering with that spot. Uh, Hicks had been an oft injured player with the, with the Eagles, but he was a third round pick and he was a great player for the Eagles when he was healthy. Uh, and in particular, his last couple of seasons, he, he just played some great ball, was good in coverage, all that sort of stuff. When he went over to the Cardinals, he's been there for two years. He's been somewhere between average to above average, um, which is, you know, not exactly what they were hoping for. Uh, he's done well. I mean, he's, and he's put up some solid numbers for us for, for IDP purposes. Right. But in terms he of, was actually like a top 10 just two years ago, maybe. Yep. Just two years ago. I mean, he was, yeah, absolutely. He was, he was, he was certainly LB one material for us. Uh, and you know, we finally got to see him have a, a healthy season and everything was looking great in terms of Hicks and stock, not only from IDP perspective, but from the football perspective, but his coverage started, his uh, coverage started to slip a little bit. His run defense started to slip a little bit. Uh, is this a, a, a matter of these injuries that he's had almost as, you know, for his first four years of his career, are these catching up to him? Uh, you know, new town, new defense, new, you know, new defensive coordinator, all those things can kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, come into play here, but, Really, you know, we can analyze it all we want. It's clear that Jordan Hicks is not playing the type of, uh, of elite football that they were hoping they were going to get at him for, for whatever reason. So, right, right. La you know, and we saw the, a little bit of the writing on the wall. It wasn't, it wasn't a death knell for Jordan Hicks that Isaiah Simmons was drafted last year in the first round. Um, but, you know, it's clearly uh, a, where a, a, an area of need for the for the Cardinals uh, is the linebacker. I mean, if they use the very, their very first pick on him two years ago, well, now here comes, uh, you know, Zayvon Collins, they use their first pick on another linebacker. And that, that really starts to say a lot. You and I had conversations about using all, all three of them on the field at once. You could use both Simmons and Zayvon Collins um, in different packages, whether it be closer to line of scrimmage as an edge rusher or, you know, dropping back into coverage, which would be Isaiah Simmons' best fit. But um, to me, uh, on top of the fact that they, they drafted two here in a, in a row, uh, the big thing for Jordan Hicks is, you know, he's starting to get toward the end of his contract. He also just um, renegotiated his contract and, took a, and basically took a, a salary cut to stay with the team. And I think mm -hmm. that's really going to be the, the, the most important piece here. Jordan Hicks, although he's not – uh, playing on an elite level like these Arizona Cardinals um, uh, thought he would be, he took a big pay cut. He's now only 3% of their cap uh, space, only represents 3% mm -hmm. of their cap space. Um, and and I want to get your uh, opinions on this. So they're going to they're gonna send out Isaiah Simmons, who's had one full season, which is good. Um, and they're going to send out a, a brand new linebacker, uh, you know, never played in the NFL yet, Zayvon Collins. Um, if they were to trade Hicks, what's behind these two kids? Yeah. Yeah. There's no depth there that at least at the moment, we, there's nothing on that depth chart. I think that they would project to have uh, Val Valo Valio or something like that. B A L E J. -O. Yeah, Vallejo, yeah. Yeah. I think he would be projected as the, probably penciled in uh, backup because he's the oldest guy on the roster besides they got a bunch of uh, first round or uh, uh, late rounders or undrafted guys, you know? So, I mean, you would think that they might consider bringing Campo back uh, on a cheap, uh, you know, deal to back up or something. I mean, they would really, 
I mean, to, to trust two very, very young guys, a rookie and a second year, year guy that only played like what, 30% of the snaps last year altogether. Right. That is, you know, I mean, you do have all those veterans around there. You've got JJ Watt, you got Chandler Jones, but still the, that's, that's, you know, Buddha Baker back there, but man, that that's awful risky, you know, and, and just to catch a few people up that might, what happened, they slipped into Simmons last year. They did not expect right. Simmons to be on the board when they came in. And, you know, personally, I wasn't shocked. I was happy for him. I've never been a Jordan Hicks fan. Um, he, him and no Alexander have been on my, because of Hicks's uh, uh, injury history in Philadelphia, they had actually been on my avoid list. There are only two players on my, in, on my avoid list have been those two players. And uh, Alexander has proven me correct. Uh, that's been over the last four years, maybe. And then, uh, you know, Mel Hicks has proven me wrong, but you know, after the one season, maybe his first season or his second season that he was a top 10, uh, tackle monster for him, you know, he hasn't really, he's just, he's slowly going back down. So, um, even last year, which I guess last year would have been his year after the big season, you know, it's still, he didn't have Simmons in there all the time. Campbell wasn't in there all, it wasn't playing well all the time, but yet he's, he, he did not perform to the level that I guess they were hoping for the previous year. Um, my main thing about Jordan Hicks is I've always had him classified as a coverage linebacker. So to stick him in the mic role, I mean, sure, they can play the mic role, but sure. that's not necessarily his best option to begin with. You know, I just never seen him as much as a, uh, a uh, run stopper, I guess you could say. But, right. you know, when we're looking at that depth, that, that, that's just really, it's just terrible. I, I don't know. They would have to address something. So which would lead into me coming uh, – uh, Back to ask you, what is the effect? Say, say Simmons walks, or not Simmons walks, Hicks walks, gets traded. They release him, which I doubt now they'll release him with that little bit of money. They right. probably would try to, of course, he could hold out or something. But, I mean, what is the effect of this? They've already said Simmons is playing. They wish they would have played him more last year or been able to. We did, we have to remember they actually stuck him in there a little while at the beginning, and he actually blew some coverages right. probably due to the COVID season and stuff like that. I don't think it was necessarily a uh, player problem, but, you know, he, he went in there, he messed up, and instead of leaving him in, they pulled him out. You know, it, it happens when you have uh, a decent backup with Campbell. But either way, uh, I'm, I'm wondering what kind of effect on Simmons and Collins Hicks not being there is going to have. Yeah, I think you, if Hicks is not there, and that's, that, that's the big one, because the, the fantasy landscape changes dramatically if Hicks is there. If Hicks is not there and we see Collins and Simmons out there a ton, I would imagine that uh, – Collins is going to be the guy who's going to be the more productive, uh, mainly because they can use Simmons in a variety of roles uh, where they may elect to just plant um, Collins in the middle where he's going to, you know, he's going to push for triple digit tackles that way. And he's probably going to get a lot of snap, snaps because, as we said, depending, you know, depending on them, there's not a whole lot of free agent linebackers out there that you would just plug into a three down role, you know, uh, but there are, there are definitely some veterans out there that you could go grab, uh, you know, to, to, to provide some sort of depth. But I think Collins would be the player you would want out of the two. If Hicks isn't there mainly because there he's likely going to, to be in the box more where they're, where, Simmons, they're going to shift around a lot. And what will happen there, we've seen it with a ton of linebackers uh, like this in the past, the ones that, that move around a lot. You'll have this, you know, 12 tackle game, you know, nine solos and three assists, you know, a couple of PD. Um, and because in that particular uh, scheme for that week, uh, he was he was in position a lot. And then the next week, he's doing a lot of extra coverage things, and he's mm -hmm. coming off the edge, and he gets, mm -hmm. you know, four tackles. Uh, and right. so, you know, a lot of inconsistency can happen with players that they move around a lot. We see this a lot, you know, 
we'll see this with safeties. You know, some of these guys who will have you know twelve tackles one week and three the next just because of of game flow. Whereas these you know um, these these Mike linebackers uh, you know will often stay there and we'll get a more consistent um, uh, consistent production out of them. Uh, if Hicks is there, I think that really hurts Collins in terms of being productive. And then I think it shifts over to um, to Simmons. And I mean that I mean that in Hicks still being just the backup. I think that Hicks will come in there and and take some snaps away from Collins, let Collins get his feet wet. Mm-hmm. When he gets spun around, as he will, you know, mm-hmm. they'll pull him off the field. They might even like you know uh, take him out of the starting lineup for a game or two, you know, and let Hicks kind of do that. So I think that there will be um, battles for snaps if Hicks sticks around. Where stick where we won't be able to use Hicks. But he'll just chip away at Collins where Collins isn't a three-down linebacker, in which case that's going to kind of roll it over to Simmons. At least that's how I'm viewing it. What do you see the the post-Hicks uh, split between these two young linebackers, Gary? Well, I'll, I'll pick up where you was talking about. With Hicks there, okay. With Hicks there, yeah, I definitely see it being a problem for Collins and Collins' owners because I can imagine that gives them a pretty easy out if he's struggling even during a game, you know, during a game, not overall, if he misses some coverages, then they're probably going to stick Jordan right back in there on passing downs or, or, or such as, you know, so I do, I think it's a big problem, which then, you know, I would favor Simmons, but personally I'm favoring Simmons anyways. I don't think, now this is, Reading in between some tea leaves and such and, and what they were talking about about the previous year, how they wish they would have just thrown Simmons in more right. and let him let him learn by the fire, you know. And I realized what but they had some things going on. They lost Chandler Jones, they didn't have much of a pass rush until all of a sudden Hussein Reddick, they finally put him in the right position. And he was just he him and Buddha Baker became the playmakers consistently. <laughs> uh, they, they they were just killing it. So um, I, I'm thinking in back of my mind that Simmons won't be used quite as much across the board as what he was last year. I think that, you know, they'll probably stick him into that weak inside linebacker position and he'll probably stay. Sure, he's going to go out on coverage and such, but – I like what I seen of him on tape. Now, you know, I, everybody knows I'm not a rookie person, but I had real pro tape to look at. And towards the end of the season, I really liked what this kid, this kid actually looked like he was confident and he was getting himself in position to make plays. And it was harder on him to do so, like you mentioned, because they were using him in multiple spots. So I would think, I would think, that is, that with, you know, Chandler Jones coming back, adding J.J. Watt, uh, I think they got Marcus Golden penciled in at the other end with uh, probably backup Kennard, uh, Kevin Denier, what's his name? Kevin Denier, something like that. Uh, Denard, old, yeah. Yeah, yeah old giant dude. Devon uh, Kennard, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So they got a couple of veterans over there. Um, didn't Did they do something else across the front line? I can't remember. Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously they got JJ Watt, but really nothing else. I mean, okay. I, I, that, that that sounds funny to say. They got JJ Watt and Jordan Phillips there, but really in terms of coming right. off the edge, it should right. be Golden and Jones. Right. Right, assuming maybe it's Phillips got hurt last year. Maybe no? he did. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's what I was thinking. He was coming back. You know, I, I don't. My issue is trusting any rookie. That is my big thing you know and i understand this kid is probably going to have a better season off season chance to learn this stuff um i question if he is actually a first round pick if he was in the same draft as simmons last year i don't think he goes first round right. i think he goes second round so i think that there's a little bit of a discrepancy in classes this year and talent perhaps not knocking on collins but if i had the two of them hicks is gone and I got a pick between the two of them on a pick. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give Simmons the benefit of the doubt of what I seen last year. Even if I know the Mike position with Collins in it should technically be better. That is very true. The Mac inside or Mike inside depends on the scheme or the coordinator, which one they call it. You know, that is definitely 
better for Collins than it is for Simmons if they're going to do what they're supposed to do. And it, they've repeated, they're going to start Collins there. Well, you know, again, is Hicks gone or is Hicks there? I don't know. Which then, um, what if, what would you suspect in say IDP production, say they do let Hicks go? Are we talking a couple of double digit guys or we are triple digit guys? Are we talking that LB2? What would you think would be a good range to for people to kind of project if they if they were going to draft one of these two dudes, Simmons or Collins? I mean, I, I think LB2 at best, uh, you know, uh, uh, they're both still young players. Mm -hmm. uh, you also tackle competition. You got Buda Baker there. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's fun for, for Gary and I to, to sit around and, and talk about, uh, you know, what it would be like for, for Collins to, to own that position all year long, um, no. because there's no, there's literally nobody behind him, but the chances of, of Hicks leaving actually, I think are pretty slim. And if Hicks leaves the chances of them not grabbing at least a veteran linebacker uh, are almost nil. So, um, right off the, yeah, there's plenty. You got KJ Wright. You got Campbell still out there. I don't know. Absolutely. I could probably name a couple of decent guys. Somebody to yeah. bring in, bring that veteran presence. Yeah. So, and, and I think, um, so I think LB two. You know, mid to low LB two is is um, maybe even a little bit on the on the on the high. Uh, spectrum of, of reasonable expectations. I, I don't see, I mean, so much would have to go right for one of these guys to, 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 to be in the conversation of, of an LB one. Uh, I, I think, I think they're going to flirt with LB two slash LB three status. Um, you know, but you know, dynasty purposes, you know, th these two are in a great position, but you know, long, right. you know, for this year, um, that's kind of where I'm thinking LB two, maybe that down into LB three. What about you? Oh, I'm I'm about ready to stick my foot in my mouth, man. I, I I'll tell you, I, I'm I don't know. I was really high on Simmons last year. I was higher on Simmons than I was Chase Young, which was probably arguably the best two, in my yeah. opinion, talented guys in that draft yeah. after the fact of where they went. And Simmons didn't get to work out the way that I thought he would. I thought he'd be beautiful as a defensive end or an outside linebacker rushing his first year, just get him in there and tell him to go get the ball with the COVID season. They laughed at me. Cardinals GM was like he wouldn't have anything to do with it. So <laughs> with that being said, I'm going to – I man, I'll tell you, I, I, I can't say in triple-digit tackle base, but I just have this feeling about Simmons, okay? You've got solid old guys up there in front. OK, yeah. these guys know what they're doing, but they're old. They're all old. I don't think there's one younger than uh, even Kennard. I mean, they're probably all like 29 or older. I, I can't I can't picture. They've all been around forever. But either way, I, I just kind of see the youth and that and with Simmons and, and what we have talked about, what I've mentioned before, I think in production that we're going to see a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of Daenerys Leonard without the, the huge combined tackles. The the year that Darius Leonard came out, he was making interceptions. He was pass defending. He was force fumbling. He was making the plays. And I don't like to uh, advise people just probably like you do to go re reaching for playmaking ability type scoring, you know, other than your base tackles. That's kind of where you want to set it. I think that's where you sit on that too. But I just I see Simmons being able to crack that top 20 and overall fantasy points, pending the scoring, of course, but in a balanced format or a tackle heavy format, I could definitely see him being a top 20 IDP inside linebacker play this year. I don't feel that way about Collins. Right, right. I, yeah, and I, I think Simmons has that, you know, um, First of all, I really like the the Leonard comp, and 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 that's kind of where I see him over the next couple of years. Um, you know, I think I think the reason that I, I uh, I'm a, I'm a little hesitant there mainly is because of the um, of the uncertainty about what's necessarily around him, um, mm -hmm. and you know there are situations that might 
might make the Cardinals, you know, experiment with Simmons a little bit more. Let's try him over here. Let's try him over here mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And, and sometimes that, that can cause issues. But I mean, if you look, you know, I can even think back to like uh, DeAndre Levy for a while for the, for, for the Lions and obviously Levante David and, and Darius Litter. Some of these um, great linebackers put up, you know, solid tackle numbers. Not, you know, Luke Keekley 150 tackle numbers, but solid tackle numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and that really creates a nice LB2 floor. Um, it's the tackles for loss. It's the force fumbles. It's the pass defense. If you get if you if you get PD in your uh, in your scoring system, you know, when they're going to use Simmons in coverage. You know, I believe long term he's he's got that sort of you know you know upside where he's going to fill your stat sheet up. Um, you know, that could absolutely happen this year. And if it does, I think you're totally right. He's you know he's I think long term he's he's one of my favorite uh, dynasty LB ones. I I just I'm with you. I think he's got all the tools. I think he can be used in, in a multitude of ways. He's you know incredibly talented. Um, and he's and it's not you know, taking the, anything away from Collins. You not know, at all. Not it, at all. He, he's a rookie, and you know I don't want people to take me wrong. I just think that looking at it, when you look at last year's class and this year's class, if he was sitting up there, if Collins was hanging around, I don't think he's a first rounder. I mean, l please correct me if I'm wrong. Do you think that he would have went over Patrick Queen or anybody else, or do do you think that he would have went over Simmons last year? Just curious. I I, I was I was just about to say that I would say let's put it this way: if Simmons and Collins were in the same class, Simmons would have gone well ahead of him. You know, okay. um, right. uh, yeah, and I, you know, I mean, um, Collins wasn't even the first linebacker to go in this draft. You know, right? Uh, right. You know, so uh, yeah, when you consider Patrick Queen, okay, so Patrick mm. Queen was one was was highly coveted last year, and so was Isaiah Simmons. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, these are incredibly talented linebackers. And notice that neither of them in their rookie season were LB ones or even no. LB twos. You know what I mean? No. And you, no. you you just said it a few minutes ago, and 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 you know, I, you know you and I are in agreement on this. It's actually really hard for an an IDP rookie to make a an um, a top twelve or maybe even a top twenty impact in in IDP. It's oh, it's yeah. rare. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, I think if we look at it, and Denarius Leonard, the last one to do it as a rookie, so yeah. And now, granted, now we've got cornerbacks like rookie cornerbacks who will get abused mm -hmm. in a particular season, you know, in their rookie season, and they'll rack up a ton of pass defense and 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 right. tackles just right. just off the rookie corner rule. So, kind of putting some of those like outlier defensive backs aside, I'm really talking about. Pass Overall. rushers, you know, interior linemen, you know, exactly, exactly. Uh, middle of the field type players. It, it mm -hmm. is rare for them to 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 kill it the very first year for lots yeah. of reasons. Um, and so, yeah, Simmons has got a leg, leg up there, and I think across the board, Simmons is the is the better talent. Um, you know, so I didn't mean to get defensive on your Collins. So I I I mean I don't know if I just sit here and, and talk to you into taking Simmons over Collins this year. I. I mean, it's it's really, you know, it's just a gut call. You know, everybody has a gut call, folks. Opinions are just that, an opinion. And I just have this gut call, you know, I it, and it's mainly rookies. I just recently put out the success rate, uh, the updated success rate through 2013, 2022 for the uh, rookies. Then what that is is basically – uh, any rookies or the amount of rookies that show up in the top 64 in any given league uh, numbers for, for production of IDP stats uh, or fantasy football points. And that, that percentage is like 3.9 since 2013. Right. 3.9 have only been really relevant in their first yeah. year. And that's yeah. been over a long period of time. Yeah. And then when I look at this class, I even mentioned that when I put it out there on Twitter, I look at this class like 2017's class. And 2017 only had three in that top 64. And I yeah. just have yeah. this. I, I, I What I said was that I think it's like 2017's plus one maybe, which would put it at four, which is the average basically. We've had a couple of, we've had a couple of season, seasons over the last few years where we've, uh, I can't, Maybe the 2018 had like seven of them or something 
kind of jumping that percentage up. But either way, I, so I, I think that's a lot of the backing between me and the wall and Simmons and Collins being the wall, you know? So, yeah. And, just, and also, you know, um, you know, essentially like we're in agreement the, the, you know, what I was saying was that if Collins is the only linebacker there, um, they will stick him in the middle mm -hmm. and teams will pick him apart any chance they get, which means he's going to get a lot of opportunity. Sure, but sure. Yeah, yeah. the chances that there isn't a Hicks or a Campbell or a KJ Wright or somebody there, uh, you know, to, to um, uh, spell – Collins supplement him. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So the, you know, my money is absolutely on Simmons. The way Collins, the the way Collins outdoes Simmons this year is simply a matter of of position and opportunity. And like I said, you know, having teams essentially, you know, run run directly at him. Uh, right. You know, right. Uh, right. We, you know, how many how many IDP linebackers have we taken advantage of? Because because we'll be like, wow, he's terrible. They're going to go right after him. I'm gonna I'm gonna get him. Right, because right. you know, uh, so uh, that's really his. To me, that's really his 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 path to being uh, IDP relevant this year is having no veteran behind him, and right. the, the Cardinals don't have a choice. I don't see that happening, and I know you don't either. So yeah, it's, absolutely, it's tough. Yeah. it's tough just to think that you know, oh, we're we're sold. We're yeah. gonna go in with a, I, I think, um, uh, Tanner. Vallo, oh, yeah, yeah. I think he was like a six rounder six years ago, and then the rest of them. Yeah, they. It's just it's risky. That's really risky. So I mean, it was nice of them to go ahead. And they could have been real assholes and told Hicks, "No, you're not going nowhere. You're under contract." I mean, a lot of organizations might do that. So uh, he could still hold out and such. But you know, um, I I think the writing was kind of on the wall. What I'm wondering, do you think that they were actually targeting a linebacker in the first round this year, whether it was Collins or somebody else? I think, I mean, you know, we'll never know because we weren't in the room, of course, but I think so. Uh, yeah, you know, kind of has that uh, feeling, right? Yeah, it, it, it does. Um, I mean, they look, look at that line. I mean, they've got, you know, uh, presumably a, a healthy Chandler Jones. They got J.J. Watt now, Jordan Phillips, who who can – you know, cause a lot of damage oh, yeah. behind them. They've got, you know, Buddha Baker, you know, they've got some really nice pieces and they and were last just, year we were talking about Zach Allen. Right, uh, right, right. Uh, yeah. Who? Yeah. Right. So I'm sorry, go ahead. No, but no, but, but you're right. Like, so, so now they've got Jones back now, you know, now they've got JJ Watt there in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. And they just got, you know, their linebackers got shredded the last couple of years. Like it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's clear as day. You can watch the tape how often, you know, and, um, Hicks gave up five touchdowns two years ago, you know, in that LB one season for us, we were like, Oh, this is great. He's given up, but he gave up five touchdowns. Uh, you know, he's given up. Um, and, and as an, as an Eagle, he was a coverage linebacker. He was a coverage specialist, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, so to see him get burned, you know, that and get picked on that poorly over the last couple of years, just goes to show you that the, the Cardinals know that they've got an issue there. They thought yeah, they fixed yeah. that issue with Hicks. Hicks is not the answer. Um, so, and also, you know, I think obviously they've got a young quarterback, right? Um, but I'm sure they're looking at their playoff slash Super Bowl window is like, look, we've got JJ Watt, we've got um, mm -hmm. you know DeAndre Hopkins, we've got uh, uh, you know Chandler Jones, we've got Buddha Baker. None of these are spring chickens. Mm -hmm. Our our Super Bowl window right now with Kyler, even though Kyler Murray's young, our Super Bowl window is you know a couple of yeah. years. While while Watt and Jones and, and you know still have legs underneath them, right, um, and right. before There's Buda Baker's miles, contract rolls out, a lot of miles on those players. Right. And even Buda Baker, you mentioned him. I don't think he's Buda Baker's what around 26, 27? Something like but that. But there yeah. are a lot of miles on that body. There are yeah. that dude's made. A bunch of tackles, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, he's right. Played a lot of ball, and there's that's another issue. So we have more than just one or two playmaking type players on this squad. You got Buddha Baker, you know. Then you have your Chandler Jones, and then you have that. So 
I yeah, the expectations. Now um, I was going to wait and toward towards the end of this talking about this, and I still might. Let me look here. Uh, while look. You, while you're doing that, just to follow up on like yep. what I was saying about the about the window here is that you know, okay. they they've got playmakers linebackers and behind the linebackers for the next couple of years uh bay you know baker right now is 25 in about two years his contract is going to be a major issue so mm -hmm. they've really got somewhere and that's about the time that chandler jones and jj watt probably have left so i do think that they realize that we have got to attack this linebacker position and the fact that they didn't do it in in the off season that they didn't address it in free agency and chose to address it in the draft from the very first pick after drafting a linebacker last year. To me, all those all those puzzle pieces said that Collins was really high up on their board and they were hoping somebody like that would be there. And there was really only, you know, I think in one of our earlier podcasts, we talked about this. This is a very thin IDP class. This mm -hmm. is our very, very thin defensive uh, uh, rookie class. So you got a couple of really good linebackers, and then it really does drop off. So yeah, um, no. I do think they attacked that position. I think I think no. I think uh, that was premeditated. No, I, a lot of it I think had to do with the fact that you know, I, I the only thing that I question, and I think I was a thing before the draft, should they replace Patrick Peterson and go corner? So after Horn was off the board or whatever, whoever they're rather hire, we 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 will never know. But boy, for them to, to, to land another first round linebacker, that just sealed Hicks's fate. So yep. he had to be sitting at home going, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and more than likely any team that's willing to trade for him right now at the, at this, at this stage, uh, well, one, they're probably a little bit desperate and they're probably not going to be a Super Bowl contender. Right. You know, it's probably right. going to be somebody like the Eagles or somebody that's going through and just, you know, so if there was, if that was actually to happen, um, you know, I would think that, it, you know, for a million for a year, let my body rest. If I was Hicks, I could play part time. I might want to see if I can get that ring by before I head anywhere else, because the odds are this is his last hurrah with them. But yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, and there we'll is a lot of talent around him on that team. I mean, oh, yeah. Really yeah. oh, yeah. If you were standing out on that field and you looked around, you got JJ Watt, Chandler Jones, Phillips. Marcus Golden is not that bad of a dude. No, he used not. to be a Cardinal. He did yep. okay. You know, he, he's all right, but just a, a solid player. And then you're looking in the back, there's Buddha back there cleaning up the mess. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. That would just be a dream, right? That's, yeah, Malcolm uh, Butler. They're, they're doing well, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the better defenses talent-wise out there. We'll see how they perform to, together this year, but I mean, uh, that's just this is stacked up out there. Um, <clears throat> I think the last thing that I really will, will folks hang out for a little bit because it, when we get done talking about this, uh, we're going to go over Justin's uh, other rookie IDP players, other than uh, inside linebackers. Uh, actually, you can talk about whoever he wants. I'd still be very interested in hearing whatever he has to say. So you guys make sure you go and, uh, you know, follow him. His, handers, twi his, his Twitter handle is right there. Follow that dude. He is a smart IDB man, and I really appreciate everything he brings to the, the program. Uh, please like, comment here on YouTube. Uh, if you're on watch catch us on Twitter, please go uh, follow Gridiron Ratings and uh, Getting Defensive Account. So I really appreciate it. But the last thing I want to ask about these two rookies are where where are they on your big board? So on your veteran big board, what's this do for Simmons? And on your and we're talking rankings, big boards, uh, and what's it do for your rookie for Collins? Uh, it does for for uh, for Simmons in particular uh, uh, for, for for the the redraft big board. It really does shoot him up quite a lot. Uh, I I had expectations for him. Uh, you know, we we moved him up uh, a decent amount heading into this year without Campbell being in in the way now mm -hmm. uh, and them not picking up anybody in free agency. Um, but I assumed that they were you know for lack of a better term. Uh, you know, and uh, let's be clear about Hicks. Hicks hasn't become some terrible player. He's just, he no. was, 
you know, he was. Oh, he can start on a lot of teams. Absolutely right, and so so yeah. he was serviceable. Um, but uh, you know, uh, they obviously. So I assumed that that Hicks was kind of kind of be the veteran out there, almost like the, you know, like John Bostic was last year for Washington. You know, just mm-hmm. just a veteran presence out there, kind of holding everything everything together. Um, the removal of Hicks, uh, or you know, the removal of Hicks for for a, a younger player allows Simmons uh, to be a little bit more of a dominant force on that. Uh, he won't have as much uh, tackle competition there in the box. So, uh, and I think they're probably going to start. And I think you think this too, you know, last year they kind of simplified his role. He was a, a rookie. They're trying to keep it simple for him. No, no preseason, you know, no mm-hmm. training camp. I think they're going to start letting him eat this year. He's going to, we're going to start yeah. seeing him in a lot of different packages. We're going to, we're going to see some big play stat sheets. So he jumped up quite a bit. Um, you know, you and I had already thought we were already fairly high on Collins. Neither of us thought that Collins was going to be a non-factor this year, even with Hicks in the lineup. We just thought he right. might be used a little bit more in the Sam role. Uh, so, so Collins has moved up a little bit. Uh, Collins did, however, uh, shoot up a bit on my on my on my dynasty boards without Hicks being there. I thought Collins was not going to fully developed there for probably another two or three years to where he was a major player in, in IDP. Uh, I think, I think obviously that timeline has been pushed up quite a bit. Um, how did these guys get affected on your, uh, on, in your ranks on your boards? Well, I can't remember if it was right before or the day of that they announced that Hicks was going to uh, uh, seek a trade and they gave him permission, but I had just this week put out my, my personal rankings for the year. I don't go super deep. I do top 32s of each position, mm-hmm. no cornerbacks. They're streamable folks. Please don't, don't sell your souls on cornerbacks. But um, <laughs> I, uh, you can catch, by the way, you can catch my rankings at gridironratings.com. And I have a, just an IDP page. It has a pull down and a menu for me and my, my personal page. So you can catch my rankings there. We're, you have rankings published right now, Justin? Uh, no, we're we're, uh, we're still working on uh, okay. projections and rankings. We're, we're trying to uh, finish fine-tuning those over the next week. All right, I hear you. I just kind of put a thing on it. We still at Gridirons are overall. Yeah. These are my personal ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, we're we're still doing We've been working on that draft guide, or especially Jeff has been working on that draft guide pretty hard. So, uh, anyways, uh, you know, I, I didn't change them. Uh, I'm pretty sure the news came out after I did this because I, I, I just first thing I thought was I want to change them. I already had them ranked at 14th. I, yeah. I know, like I said, but I've already explained why I think that he was going to do it. I thought he was, you know, this was before the Hicks news. So, I mean, this is an account, no matter who that playing that position next to him, I just see this guy taking a sophomore jump. I just think that it's, it's, you know, they learn from their mistakes. They have verbally said that they wish they did it differently last year, you know, uh, uh, to the point or could have did it differently. Maybe they couldn't have, but either way, I have got them in a 14th amongst my inside linebackers and I'm not moving. I'm not budging them. I think that's already nosebleed probably for them. I got comments as soon as I posted these from people, you know, how come you got them so high? And it's just, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just blown away. I think that he, the, the sky's his limit. I don't think that he's going to be just that normal weak side inside linebacker, you know, for this, for the squad. I just think he's going to be there. But anyway, so he didn't move. Um, that is considered in my top tier. My top tier is I, I always, I like deep format. So my first tier is, is, is 16, top 16. So gotcha. he's, yeah. yeah, so he's right in there. Uh, that would be second tier for a lot of people. When it comes to Collins, I haven't moved him either. Um, quite frankly, um, if I did anything, because I had, I think me, we were close on our on our uh, uh, rookie rankings inside linebackers. I yes. had Davis, and then I had the Rams, Jones, and one and two, Parson and three, and then Collins and four. If this does anything for me, all of a sudden I got a three A and a three B. Right. You know, I really, yeah. I mean, it's kind of the same sticky situation. Now, if you told me Collins, hey, the breaking news, Collins is gone, 
I might actually be like, okay, let's let's make Collins A and Parsons B for redraft. You know, yeah. I mean, they're they're both going to be good for dynasty. We already know that. So that I want to be clear, these are, I'm talking about redraft. But um, so I don't know. Did 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 you tell? Did you say what they did in your rookie? What what Collins do? Oh, uh, in my rookie, Collins really didn't 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 move uh, too much, except for. Um, uh, except for like, there's like rookie and there's like dynasty dynasty. He, he moved up some mainly because right. like I said, I thought he was going to be more of a, uh, like, like third year, he'd be a, a major player, but without Hicks there, obviously, you know, that timeline is, is going to get accelerated. Right. Um, so, uh, but you know, we, in terms of, of, of rookie, you know, rookies for this year, uh, he really didn't move because, you know, you and I, as you and I already talked, he, he was already pretty high up there. Just, yeah, from, just right. from his, you know, regardless of how they were going to use him, we figured he, we knew for sure he was going to be on the field. Mm-hmm. Um, although now if he's going to, you know, play, play a more prominent role. He, we still expected him, you know, we didn't, we didn't right. expect a 15, 20% snap guy here. We expected him to still be on the field, just used in other capacities. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And a hey, folks, it is the off season. These guys could see him in OTAs, mini camp, preseason, and be like, "Oops, right." <laughs> is, is KJ right? Is he still yeah, a free like, agent? Get on the horn. Get on the, right, get on the right. horn. Right. Um, um, sit down, rookie. You twisted your ankle. What do you mean, yeah. coach? Well, you don't know it yet. You twisted your damn ankle. Sit down. Yeah, right? Somebody twist his ankle quickly. Right, right, right. <laughs> hey, Hall, yeah, he, he twisted his ankle telling the media at, after the practice. Right. All right, folks, so we're, I think we've covered and hashed out this Cardinals situation for right now. Um, you've got a couple of different opinions on a couple of things, but we agree on a lot of things as we normally do. And uh, we're going to make sure that we have time to get in any rookie, other other. IDP relevant rookies that that Justin would like to talk about. Yeah, I'm just going to mention a couple. We obviously kind of uh, did a deep dive on on linebackers the last time we spoke, so I just want to mention a handful of edge rushers and a handful of of, of DBs. Um, most of these are are obvious. I'll try to grab a few that are, that are maybe a little bit deeper. Um, Jalen Phillips, uh, the edge rusher uh, um, for the Dolphins, there. I, I think he's going to be somebody who's going to see a ton of snaps. What I also like is this is a very, uh, very good, very aggressive defense. Um, and we've talked before about how um, the, the, the great combination for a defense is um, uh, getting the pass rush timed with the, uh, the corner, with the coverage, right? So mm-hmm. uh, Miami is loaded at, at, at cornerback. Uh, also um, a couple of uh, uh, ta- young and talented safeties there as well, as well, obviously as, as a veteran. Um, but I think with those talented cor- outside corners, they've got Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. I think Phillips is going to get a lot of chances um, uh, to, to get at the quarterback. So I, I could see for edge, um, and and for defensive line, I, I think Phillips is, is one of the main guys, and obviously Quiddy Pay uh, over for Indianapolis. Kind of a you know a, a, a slightly different situation, but um, overall a, a, a similar situation in that in that he's going to benefit from the talent around him. But in Indianapolis, although Indianapolis does have you know pr- pretty solid uh, corners. The way Quiddy Pay is going to be um, is going to benefit from these veterans is you know lining up next to uh, um, DeForest Buckner. Oh yeah, uh, you, you know they won't even know Pay's there half the time. They won't yeah, even care. Yeah. Right? So he, he's yeah. going to get a, a lot of free looks as well. So do you um, think that he'll play the Houston role, a, a Justin Houston role, as a kind of a stand-up rusher, or do you think he'll have his hand in the dirt like a D? I think you know that's a tough one. I mean. On paper, it looks like he would he would slot in, uh, you know, as the uh, uh, you know in the in that Justin Houston role. Uh, so it's, that's probably where he's going to be, um, yeah. you know, because uh, they're they're pretty stacked in the middle, but they could use help off the edge, and, and that's kind of a a good place to slot him in. So I I think he's probably going to end up slotting in closer to that Justin Houston role. Uh, but I do think he is he's got more potential, you know. Uh, as a run defender um, than, than Houston did, you know, no offense to Justin Houston. He's just, he's just older, you oh, know, yeah. and, 
Yeah, he you lost know, his step a couple of years ago. Yeah, and, and yeah. you know, we've seen it a lot with these veteran pass rushers where they'll just use, you know, they'll try to keep their legs fresh, keep the responsibilities low, and say, listen, use that great um, ar- array of pass rush moves and get out there, you know, a couple of times a game for us. Um, and let the younger guys, you know, do the heavy sledding. Um, I, they haven't really used him much as, as run defense. Pay is actually a pretty good run defender. So I could see him partly playing that Justin Houston role, but in certain packages, you know, like, I think later downs, uh, you know, he's going to be that Justin Houston role. I think early downs, they probably will, will keep him on the field and use him in, in, in run defense. Um, yeah. and, they, and they do. The Colts do use a multiple kind of – front there they, they yeah. wouldn't had all three last year stewart uh a little bit of to to wake on lewis which i'm voting for a breakout season uh and then buckner and stuff they were able to bring in buckner last year that makes any def- i mean i guess you can't say any defensive line but they were set up they had some younger talent on there they had some older decent talent and and you're you're, you're probably right i i'm having trouble wanting anybody in this draft beyond that those those first right the, those first linebackers you know after that yeah. i don't think idp wise i mean we were talking about safeties do you have any safeties in mind yeah there's a couple i, I think probably the 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 one that has the most opportunity just staring him in the face is richie grant mm-hmm. uh there for the falcons i mean they've got a they've got basically nothing there <laughs> do you okay uh, so i gotta i just i i think that the top three safeties you got Grant, you got uh, let's see who else you got. You got the kid and you got Thompson or something like that down in Miami and another kid. Do are these all free safeties? I mean, where are Grant's they go? Gonna, yeah, exactly. Uh, Grant's going to be interesting because you know obviously they've got a new defensive coordinator now uh, mm-hmm. there, but um, uh, I think that works in his favor a little bit. Yes, well that yeah th- th- that's true. He he can certainly do both, uh, but but I I would imagine they're going to use him uh, a little bit more uh, in the box. I don't think he's going to be Keanu Neal level in terms of how much time he's he's spending in the box. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, he's one of my first ones, uh, but he's but he, but this isn't a Jamal Adams Keanu Neal like plug him in first you know uh, uh, first week and, and expect him to be a major right. player in, in redraft. Right. Uh, we want to see a little bit more how he's used. I tell you somebody I'm interested to see how they're going to use him, um, and that's Trayvon Merrick out of out of the out of the Raiders. You know, he's. Um, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, t- to me, this is a guy uh, who can can play both, um, and and to me, this is going to be fascinating. I- I'm excited to watch what's going to happen here. We know what kind of. Uh, you know, uh, single high coverage that Gus Bradley normally plays. Um, I think that Merrig might be a signal that Bradley is switching things up a little bit and going to play a little bit more too deep, uh, which which will get Merrig a little bit more involved in the run game than people think. think I don't necessarily think he's going to be one of these classic uh, Gus Bradley or, you know, Seattle coaching tree um, situations where where Merrick just sits back there at free safety. I think they could they could use the help um, up there for run run defense at times. Um, but again, I mean, this is you know I, I I'm fascinated to watch Merrick and how they're going to use him. But don't interpret any of that to mean that I think he's going to be a, a major uh, 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 player for right, IDP right. this year. Um, this you know there, there's just not really a whole lot there. Javon yeah. Holland, maybe for Miami, but I think the way that they run things in Miami, that's not going to necessarily be, um, uh, you know, it's actually going to be a, a similar situation where they're where they're not going to be using him like exclusively up in the box, which is what we would want to see right. um, for right. for for a safety. Um, yeah. See, and I'm a, I'm a Brandon Jackson guy. I planted my oh, flag. Right, yeah. and- our Brandon Jones, sorry, Brandon Jones. I planted my flag. He's my DB breakout this year. Yeah, I'm just right. keep waiting for that Eric Rowe news. Get him out of there. <laughs> get, get that, that student get, drop. Yeah, we got McCain. I called that one. I said McCain, yep. and yeah, it, I just. But I, I, I was kind of shocked a little bit that they actually went that high. It might have been the best player off the board with that safety situation. But I think McCain might just. Yeah, McCain hadn't been the same McCain for oh, some time. So, um, 
the whole the whole way the whole situation is right now uh i'm really interested i'm pulling for jones to get some of that eric rowe love maybe they'll release them maybe they'll trade them <laughs> they're yes yeah. Say, say they need to save some money somewhere else. So I'm hoping it's, it, he's the guy to go. But again, you know, and traditionally we're talking about the free safeties folks. They just, I give me a free safety a lot of times over a cornerback. That's for sure. If you have designated DB, but oh, yeah. free safeties are just, they're not going to get to tackle opportunities yeah. that a lot of other, now you have your Jesse Bates, you have your Chris Sims or whatever, which is arguably they're just, it's a, it's a, uh, a dual ro role because they can play free safety to safety. They'll just put them wherever they need them or whatever, but not all the systems are like that. And yeah, if the, the kid we were talking about with the Oakland, if he was, if he's replacing Harris as what Harris was when he was there, yeah, there's not much to love about that, but you, like you indicated, we do have a new defensive coordinator down there. Yeah. Right. I, I would you know, um, there's a reason why we did an entire uh, podcast dedicated to the linebackers and we're squeezing in the edges and the, <laughs> the, in the last backs. 15 minutes of some big ass news. Right. <laughs> right. And, and and obviously keep in mind, you know, uh, uh, you know, both of us have harped on this, like, uh, you know, we're talking about three to five percent of uh, rookie IDPs make an impact their first year, and that's and that's including, you know, draft classes with um, Chase Young and Joey Bosa and DeForest Buckner and Darius Leonard and you know like some some and Jamal Adams and, and Keanu Neal and Deion Jones like so um, you know much better defensive classes have produced e even those classes have produced a, a minuscule amount of IDP relevance in redraft. Uh, this lead, you know, this class being, um, you know, and it's also a combination. It's not only the class itself, but like some of these safeties, had they landed in spots where it was clear they were going to be a strong safety, then we, we, we could, um, you know, uh, pump them up a little bit more, but right. that's, unfortunately that's just not the case. Do you have, you have a second? Sorry, you all right, three. or you, you, it's well, three. I, I know you was on a time limit. You got it. Oh, bless you, man. <laughs> good. Yep. All good. I was just going to mention real quick. So like I said, folks, I've put up my, uh, my rookie IDP hit rate tracker. Uh, you can find that on my page, uh, blah, 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 gridironrange.com uh, tipster page. But I just want to run down real quick, folks. So in 2020, 124 IDP guys was drafted. Now, this is not including uh, any undrafted signed or whatever. So 124 drafted, five made the top 64 of relevant players. Okay, that's uh, 2019. We had 129, six made it. Those are, those are sounding good, right? Here's our really good one. Here's a 2018. This is the one that just threw my damn numbers off because I've been doing this for years. And I was like mad all for two, 2019 that this 2018 actually moved the needle a little bit. But in 2018, we had 128, nine of them, right? Nine of them made it up into there. Um, the thing about it is, is from 2000, you take out 2018, 2016 was four out of 127. 2015, four out of 125. 2000, I said 2000, oh, three. I'm sorry, three out of 103, 2017. Okay, so th th basically the average is four a year. Right now, yeah. the average is four a year. You'll just don't let me hack this up any more than I have, folks. Just go check it out. I've got it down here for you. And I've even listed who those players are uh, below the, the, the chart that has it. Um, they're lottery tickets, you know, and you sometimes want to buy a $10 lottery ticket scratch off, or you want to buy a dollar lottery scratch off. Okay. I, I personally, I don't know about Justin, but I'm going to buy a couple of those $10 tickets on say, uh, James, Jameson Davis, maybe, uh, maybe Collins, buy a couple of those $10 ones and sit back and, and wait and see what happens. But in terms of redraft, but as for the dollar tickets, I'm saving those dollar, the, the dollar I would have spent on that. I would trade my picks personally and try to buy another $10 ticket up next year instead. 
I'm just not, I'm not excited about this class overall personally. And, and I hope they prove me wrong because I'm yeah. like being told I'm wrong. Well, and, and, you know, just, just to point out what happened in 2018, I mean, it's a pretty ridiculous class. I mean, you've got Roquan Smith, M Minka Fitzpatrick, uh, Tremaine Edmonds, Derwin James, Leighton Vander Esch, Rashawn yep. Evans, you know, all these guys went in the first round, right, uh, right. you know, so, you know, what you've got there is, uh, and, and we're not even talking about rookie corners, like, you know, Jair Alexander, et cetera, and Denzel Ward. So you've got a, a lot of those kinds of rookies. They almost immediately started and played tons of snaps. Tremaine Edmonds started, played tons of snaps. Leighton Vander Esch started, played tons of snaps, right? So there's a lot of these players, um, you know, where it's a really talented class. It's a deep class. And, you know, these players, uh, you know, Derwin James going to Gus Bradley's, you know, yeah, single perfect high. Opportunities. They perfect, went, yeah, yeah the, all their guys, is, they fell in the right spots, the right year, the right time. And, and even just, with that, it's just nine players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and to, to hit that nine from 2018 again, again, folks, this is the average. Even with the nine, is still only five. So you take out that nine, and it's four. So I mean, it when you have a peak, there's always the fall. Yeah, you know. Sure. So and we had six the year after, and now we had five in 2020. Folks, yeah. I hate to say it, but we'll be lucky to get four this year. I don't think that they're uh, the fellow that you was talking to down down in Miami. I bet he does get a lot of playing time, but what he's he's not an elite player. We would have seen him go in the first five, first yep. year without a defensive lineman taken in the first five. So yeah. the guy is a good guy to get, probably a hell of a dynasty stash. Just don't plan on him anchoring your lineup at defensive yeah. end. I think that might be what you was kind of referring to. Yeah, yeah basically the, the players I'm mentioning are players who I think have dynasty potential. Right. Um, I, I, I don't sure. see myself drafting a single um, defensive lineman, cornerback, or uh, safety out of this class in a redraft league. I, you know, I might have some, some Jamin Davis and, and Colin, you know, Zayvon Collins shares and some things like that, but I'm not drafting any of those guys. Um, yeah, I, I I'm going to stash them late on, uh, in dynasty leagues. And by then they're probably not leagues, there because somebody else has fell in love with them. Right. And they're you know going to get Take right, you take right, draft right. Draft. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even Davis. I mean, I love Davis. Everybody loves Davis now that they realize where he's fell. You know, it's like, well, it, or Ernest. Uh, I like him with the Rams. Yep. You know, we don't know. We just don't know, folks. It's lottery tickets this year, big time. I, I'm personally, I've actually got some rookie stuff coming up or rookie drafts and I, if I can't get one of those top three or four names, I, I I might just take offensive flyers if I have to. Yeah. You know, I mean, if they're later, third, fourth round or whatever, you might as well. I mean, that's the one thing. You can always get IDP. We're, uh, guys like us will always find you IDP on the waiver wire in certain plays. So, you know. Well, I Justin, I really appreciate you hanging out today. And I know we got a late start. Hey, I'm so glad we got to do this, though, man. This this Jordan Hicks uh, topic especially was a hot one. And hopefully we've helped some people kind of make some decisions, pump the brakes, don't pump the brakes. If you're a Jordan Hicks owner, our apologies. Good luck to you. Maybe he'll land in, back in Philadelphia or something and, and, and make a difference for somebody. But um, I think at this point, unless you would like to add anything, I'm going to get us out of here. No, this is good. Thanks for having me, Gary. It was fun as always. Well, yeah, we can't wait to see you hopefully again next week. Sounds good. Bye, folks.